Um, hello. It has been about three weeks since I made a video. My last one was when Picard ended. I've been trying to make a video. Um, sorry, you can hear my dog barking in the background. Ignore him. Um, I was trying to make a video once a week, and I don't know, just with all with the world ending and everything, I took a couple weeks off. Um, I'm going to try and make a couple of videos this week to make up for the last three weeks that I missed. We'll see how that goes. Anyway, I was sitting here working on my comic book. I am an amateur artist. I have a story in my head, and I'm attempting to tell it as best as I can. Um, I was sitting here working on it, drawing it, kind of a dramatic moment, I know. Uh, working here, drawing it. And I just figured, you know, me drawing, working on this comic, this could make a good video to put up, and this could, you know, make a little bit of content for the old YouTube. So, this is a trial run for me. I'm just gonna kind of talk and yabber and talk to myself as I draw, which is a little different than just thinking to myself or listening to music, but I'm gonna see how that goes. And basically, I'm just shading this last panel. Yes, this is a dude kicking a girl right in the crotch. They're in a martial arts tournament. Crotch shots are allowed. And just so nobody is like worried or afraid for her. He kicks her, he knocks her down. She goes tumbling. And the referee comes here and pulls a big foul on him. Gives him a warning. She gets back up. She makes a comment. And he goes to attack. But instead she kicks him. So the scorpion kick, she punches him in the stomach, she has three more kicks, she kicks him in the jaw, switches legs, and she kicks him right back in the crotch. So don't worry, she kicks him back. And they've been kicking and hitting each other for a while now. This is this is a whole tournament thing that I'm drawing. Um, here's the score up. You can see it started out here, got down to here, got down to here, got down to here. Um, this not only takes place in another time, in an alternate universe, and in the future, so everything's different, but these gloves and these pads you see them wearing are padded and shock absorbent, so eh, they're, they're getting hit pretty hard, but they're also taking it. They're training. This is something they're doing. This is the story in my head, and I'm drawing it. I'm doing the best I can. Leave me alone. Anyway, you got some drones up here that are recording it. You got audience here. Uh, there's like 20 something people on each side. So depending where I'm looking, I've got to draw the audience for each side, which you can see. Uh, so basically this jumps into the story at the very end of the tournament. Uh, jumps into the story at the very last match. And that's between this girl, Sarah Dallas, and this guy, Felipe Bonaventure. And yes, I get to a point where he kicks her in the old and I'm just shading and detailing this last panel as best as I know how to. And yes, this is what I'm doing. So bear with me as I try to make this happen and be a thing that is a thing that is a thing. Um, as I have said, I do not consider myself to be the greatest of all artists. Okay, so art is one of the things that I love. Art is one of the things that I aspire about. Art is one of the things I think about. But I'm not the best artist in the world. I'm just not. And I understand completely how the structure of a story works. I understand how... I understand how, you know production works, I understand how CGI and graphics and stuff work, I don't understand necessarily um, all the ins and outs of how all the programs and processes work, but I understand how it's all done. Uh, in high school I did a rather comprehensive multimedia course where I learned Photoshop, I learned uh, Bryce 3D, which I don't even think that exists anymore. Um, and I learned Poser 3D, which that's still around. That's still a thing, Poser. Uh, hang on. Uh, I'm distracting myself by talking. Okay, so Poser. I learned Bryce Poser. Um, there's something else. I learned Bryce. I learned Poser. 
I learned Infinity. Infinity was my favorite. That's the closest thing I can think of to Infinity today is like SketchUp or Blender in a more complicated fashion. But uh, Infinity, Poser, Bryce, um, Photoshop, obviously, I learned that. I know there was a third one. For life of me, I can't think of it. If I think of it later, I'll say it. Anyway, I learned some old animation programs. And I learned a lot about production and how these things do. Taking TV classes. And, you know, I generally understand how TV shows and stuff are made. Okay. I understand how comic books are drawn. I understand how art programs work. I understand many, many things. That being the case... I'm just not the best artist in the world, you know? I, I know how a body works, but it doesn't mean I can draw it very well. Um, you know, uh, I understand how this, that, or the other should look, but that doesn't mean that I know how to execute it correctly, you know? I understand how lighting and all that stuff works, you know, um, I understand the concept of shading and all that stuff. That doesn't mean I understand exactly how lighting works, though. That doesn't mean that I know how to get the shadows perfect. Like, don't get me wrong. There are some artists out there that I know that you can set them loose on a piece of art and they'll make everything absolutely perfect. And they'll do a really good job of it. And they should do a really good job of it because that's their painting. But I'm just not one of those people, you know? So, when it comes to my artwork, when it comes to my comic book, my primary goal is to get the story out of my head. Yeah, I'm, I'm kind of fastidious when it comes to my artwork. I do care what it all looks like, you know? Don't you hate it when you accidentally put something on the wrong goddamn layer? Did not mean to fucking do that. It's fixable though, it's always fixable, that's the thing. Never fear for it is fixable. Okay, sorry about that. Oh, god damn it. First time trying to record myself arting and I just completely fuck up everything I'm doing. Ignore me. Alright. So anyway, like I was saying, I don't ex understand exactly how all the lighting and shading should work. I don't know where every shadow should fall. I'm not one of those artists that can look at something and I'm just instantly like, that should be like that, that should be this, this should be this. You know, I really wish I were because I'm quite envious of the artists who can just do their thing just by looking and it comes so easily to them. And <clears throat> people like that couldn't even imagine for a second how difficult it is for someone like me to just try to guesstimate how the laws of physics, how the world, how my image, my art image should look, you know? They have no idea how hard it is for me to just try to kind of figure this out. And okay, yeah, I live in the world. I understand a thing or two about how things work. That's, that's, that's sure. But, you know, like, there's that one artist who's autistic or whatever, and you can fly him over the city in a helicopter and let him loose on a wall, and he'll redraw the entire city in complete perfect perspective and complete detail. I wish I could do things like that. Jesus fucking Christ. I mean, I feel for the guy and uh, the afflictions that he goes through. Don't get me wrong, I have a lot of afflictions myself. Uh, growing up, I was what they considered a uh, learning disabled, which, you know, and fun. Um, really, 
which is very dyslexic, and I have some very high ADHD going on, and I am a little bit on the spectrum myself. I am uh, slightly autistic myself, so, yeah, it is what it is, but, uh, so I have nothing against that, but feel for the guy and any kind of problems that he has going on, I'm just saying, I wish I could just look at something and sit down with a piece of paper and just like sketch it out. It's not quite that easy. But that being the case and that being said, I do do my best to approximate or figure this out or at least draw things to a point where I like how they look. And even if it isn't quite perfect, even if that isn't quite how this should look or should be, you know, I'm trying to figure it out myself, and, hold on. I'm trying to figure it out, and I'm just trying to draw, and I'm just trying to, you know, make my art look as good as I can. Like whites or like you'll see this now. Okay, right now I'm doing like this grainy shading. This is how I texture my stuff. I start off with like a uh, texture layer that just kind of puts some grime over everything, and then I do like a soft shading here, and then like a hard shading over that using like a filter. And then I'm about to do my white layers, which is like the reflections and lights and everything going on around them. Like this is not how lighting works. This is not exactly how this whole thing should work. But since I'm not exactly sure how it should look, and I want the image to still be, you know, somewhat interesting to have stuff going on, I just draw this the best I can. And so, it's like I'm saying. I don't think I'm one of the best artists in the world. I really don't. I honestly don't think I'm the worst. Uh, I'm just kind of doing the best that I can. I'm trying to have some fun while I do it. And as far as my story goes, if you're wondering about that, um, ever since I was a kid, this was a coping mechanism to just not getting along with other kids, kind of being uh, a bit of a, what's the word I'm looking for, an, an introvert, yeah, or a recluse, or hikikimori, hikikimori, yeah whatever you want to call it, just being kind of recluse, um, you know, I came up with my own worlds, I came up with my own ways to kind of entertain myself, to, to imagine stuff, to, you know, cope with life. Sometimes I took some experiences from life and I integrated it in my story, and this is an amalgamation of me coping with the world, really. I mean, you know, it's like George Martin said, his characters just started talking to him in his head and then he found a need to give them a voice. And that's kind of just what happened with my characters. They started off as, uh, geez, I want to say they actually started off as a fan fiction to Deep Space Nine way back in the day. <sighs> that, that shows you how old this story for me is anyway. Um, They started off as a fan fiction to Deep Space Nine, and you know, as I grew up, I realized, well, hey, I'm never going to make a Star Trek story, so I have all these elements here that don't fit with Star Trek. Might as well make them my own thing. And as I grew up, as I developed certain tastes and certain characteristics of characters and certain kinds of TV shows I liked, this thing eventually took on just a life of its own. Um, you know, and here it is. And this story starts with a martial arts tournament between Sarah and this dude Felipe. And they may or may not have been dating previous to this tournament. And their dating life led to them being in a bad situation together where they ended up fighting each other. And things turned out a little worse than they possibly needed to. And they're the last two in the tournament. And, uh, yeah. And this is the last panel on, this is page 10 of, I want to 
missed. It's like 28 pages, I think. Uh, don't quote me on that. I'm not quite sure, but it's what I think it is. Anyway, so this is the last panel on... Alright, I'm not good at this, talking and drawing at the same time. Um, yeah, last panel, page 11 of 28. And he, she kind of loses his temper a little. Uh, has a thing or two to say to her. And, you know, crotch shots in this tournament actually are allowed. It's in the rules. So are headshots. You just, you can't perform a move out of malice. So, like, he, he's not allowed to just, like, strike because her words are pissing him off. And that's part of the thing, is that the audience is also, like, yelling at them. And the point of that is to control your emotions uh, during a time of stress. So, he, he's basically failing that part by letting her words get to him. And he's lashing out. And he's going to do this whole thing where he kicks her in the crotch and then he kicks her in the jaw and then he kicks her in the stomach and he knocks her down. She's going to have to get back up and she's going to get him right back. Now, this does get you a big foul move in the tournament. This isn't something you should be doing. Um, you know, it's frowned upon, certainly. Uh, but he still did it. And then she did it. And they both lose points for this. And it's both bad that they do this. But they both do it. And this is actually based off some martial arts tournaments that friends of mine partook in when I was a kid. And you know, they weren't supposed to pull cheap moves, certainly weren't supposed to hit each other in the crotch, but on occasion it did happen. And so You know, that's, that's what's happening here, except it's gender equality, so, you know, it's PC if a boy fights a girl, and she gets kicked in the crotch, it's just something that happens. Um, yes. Same thing, when she kicks him back, she isn't supposed to, but she does, and it's again. It's, you know, it's not something that's supposed to happen, but it's just something that does. And, you know, I recently realized <laughs> what this particular story is all about. And it's really this story about this dude who was dating Sarah. That's this girl. And then he started acting like an ass all the time. Okay, well, let's leave it that out. <laughs> well, some stuff happened. So, I guess the only people who might know anything about my story are the people who watch this video. So, um, so basically what happened was, T's known Sarah for a very long time. They've been in martial arts together for a long time. For a long time he's had a thing for her, and for a long time she hasn't really paid much attention to him. She's kind of ignored him mostly. But recently something happened. They just started talking, they started getting along, they started getting to know each other. Uh, they just, they got closer, and he wanted to date her, and she was down for it, and, but, not really, she's never really been one who likes to commit to something, especially something like a dating, so, it was kind of on preliminary terms, for the first month, everything was good, the first couple of months, everything was good, okay, so, like I said, Alternate future, alternate world, alternate France, all of that, right? S yeah, this takes place in France, too, where martial arts are not legal, but they are here because this is alternate. Everything's alternate. This is Neo Paris. Okay, so, okay, like right here, I'm drawing the shadow underneath her head. I know I'm drawing it wrong, but it's just how I do it. And. That's just how I draw the shadows and I'm kind of just kind of my style and just kind of my flow. I, I know it's kind of wrong and I know that I'm not drawing it as good as I could, but guess what? It's good enough because it allows me to depict the character 
It allows me to get the story as far as the story is concerned out of my head. It allows me to get this panel out of my head. So, even though I know I'm doing all this very wrong, well, I'm doing it as well as I can. And, you know, I know there are streams and things you can watch to learn how to do these. That doesn't. I'm a visual learner, and I guess I just haven't found the right thing to teach me what to do differently. And even though people tell, even though I see how to do these things, there are different methods. I still don't completely understand how shadows are supposed to work, even though somebody like explains it to me, like. Like Anna, that Star Wars girl, she is an amazing artist, and she's explained many things about art. Just because she explains it doesn't mean that something will make sense to me. So, here I am. Just doing the shading as best as I can, and just, to a degree, just doing something that looks good to me. If this is like driving any professional artist to understand everything that there is to know about lighting, completely nuts. I apologize. I'm doing the best I can. Um, but yes, okay, so they started dating, and Felipe and Sarah were a thing for a while, and everything was good. And then in this ultimate world, there's this martial arts school they both go to. Well, every seven years, they hold a tournament. And every seven years, there is a group of schools, there's like seven of them, I believe, that can participate in this thing. There's a group of seven of these schools that can participate. And this year around, Sarah and Felipe were old enough to enter. Uh, you have to be within a week of turning 18 to enter. Felipe is 18, Sarah will be 18 in a week. So she was able to enter. And so they both took the qualifying uh, entrance exams because the whole schools are doing it. And they placed in the winning criteria so that they could both enter. And then she decided she didn't want to enter because Sarah has a popular identical twin. Her father is also someone prominent. And she likes to stay out of the limelight. She doesn't want to be known. She doesn't want to be seen in public. So something like this is not appealing to her. Not something she would want to do. So she started dating Felipe. Felipe was going to enter this thing, and the only person he's ever really had trouble fighting is Sarah. It's not that she's better or anything, she just practices hard. She's got some shit at home, which I don't want to talk about her home life right now, but she's got a very crazy kind of home life. She's got a lot of stress that she deals with, so she actually isn't better than Felipe, she just, she applies herself at the martial arts more and she's got more steam to blow off than he does. And so, she is like one of the best. And you want to call her Mary Sue, that's fine. She's about to turn 18, she's been training since she was like 10 or 11. So, she's been at this many years. And she does have a lot of crazy shit going on in her life, which again, I'm not talking about right now. But she's just good at what she does. And so, Felipe didn't want to face her. And when he qualified to get into this and found out that she wasn't entering, that was fantastic. Wonderful. It's just what he wanted to do. He didn't want to think about fighting Sarah because it's his girlfriend. And you know, this whole thing is just. He wants to win it. He doesn't want to have some conflicting shit going on. Then, in the months leading up to the tournament, Turns out that Felipe had an eye for another. Her name was Sybil. And Sybil kind of has a partner in crime girlfriend who they love each other. You know, they're kind of gay for each other, but not all the time. They're just really partners in crime. That's that's the best word for them. Sybil and her girl Courtney. Courtney had an eye for Sarah. Sybil more had an eye for Felipe. And they wanted, you know to have some fun with Sarah and Felipe. And soon, somehow beyond what Felipe could understand, they wound up being a quadruple, 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 quadruple. Uh, it, not threesome, quad, you know? Quadruple, sure, quadruple. 
and the whole reason that this happened was Sarah, she's kind of bi, you know? She doesn't always show the gay, but the gay is there. And she's into girls more so than guys, and you know, her and Felipe were always kind of are we aren't we anyway. And while keeping things casual with Felipe, she got into Courtney. Courtney's number one loyalty is to Sybil because they're partners in crime. So, Sarah never hooked up with Felipe. They, they had some stuff going on. Things happened. She never quite hooked up with him. And Felipe wanted to be with. He wanted to be with Sybil. He wanted to be with Courtney. And so he did. He hooked up with both of them. And they didn't tell Sarah. And they were planning to get her to hook up with them on her birthday, which is December 31st. So, end of the year, they were going to try and get her into bed with them. And get her to just do a thing with them. That was the whole plan. And she caught them one day in the locker room together. And she found out before they were ready for her to find out. Well... Courtney just stood there and kind of laughed. Uh, she caught Sybil and Felipe before they were ready for her to find out. And Sarah cried, and Courtney, or no, Sybil laughed at her. And Sarah always cries. She's a bit of a crybaby, and everybody makes fun of her for it. And they laughed at her, and it wasn't fun. It wasn't nice. And so Sarah broke up with all three of them. I was like, fuck you guys. And, you know... She got herself into this weird situation. She got herself into this weird thing with Felipe. She got herself into this whole should we, shouldn't we, whatever. But here's the thing, is that she was always open-minded. She was never into commitment. The only reason she got mad is because nobody told her and they were plotting behind her back. They kept it from her, they hid it from her. And they didn't tell her what was up. And they didn't communicate with her. And that was the one thing that she wanted was communication. And so it was kind of a deal breaker. And so, yeah, now she is here fighting Felipe. Uh, the person who was supposed to take her place in the tournament ended up dropping out anyway. And she was asked to participate once again because she had turned it down. And normally, again, she wouldn't be interested in this, but after she caught them and everybody was laughing at her, she was all angry. You know, she decided to enter the tournament, like, fuck them, I'm gonna do this. And so, another reason Sarah might be fighting so hard is because she's very angry at what fucking happened. It's not cool. They hurt her feelings. And so, here we are. And at one point, Felipe loses his temper from something that something Sarah says. From something, something, something. Yeah, that's not weird. Something Sarah says. And... It leads to a series of events where he kicked her in the crotch, and she'll kick him back in the crotch. And it's going to get worse, and basically the whole story is Felipe getting himself cancelled. Once he just makes one bad decision after another, going up against Sarah. Uh, you know, she wasn't supposed to enter the tournament, she wasn't, but then she did enter when she was asked to enter. And she beat all of them. She beat Felipe, she beat Sybil, she beat Courtney. She beat everybody else to get to this point where you kick Felipe's ass. And she's going to take something away from him that he wanted to win. Because, you know, the winner gets to go to a higher ranked school in Japan and get a scholarship there. She's going to snatch that out from under him. Which, you know, that isn't cool. And she doesn't even really want to go to this thing. But he pissed her off. And this is just kind of what's happening now. And you know what? I'm not saying that what she's doing is right. But what he did was... Not completely wrong, but you know, all he had to do, all any of them had to do, was say, "Hey, we're going to fuck. We like each other. We don't really want to wait." And she would have been like, "Fine, just be honest with me. Talk to me." And she wouldn't have cared. She would have let them do it because you know she was more into Courtney than anyone else. And Felipe was screwing around with uh, Sybil when she caught him. Really, what she was mad about is that they were plotting stuff. They were gonna get her to be with them on her birthday. Okay, what I'm doing right here, the white, I know the white doesn't really reflect off of like cloth and stuff, but I guess it does. I usually, when I draw it, I do like a light, white shading or highlight, I guess, and it just makes my stuff pop a little more. 
And this is like what I'm doing here is white lighting on uh, the rubber gloves that they're wearing, which I think I said this earlier, but this stuff is more shock absorbent than would be possible in our real world. Okay, so these gloves are more protective than you would think. Because this is a future alternate reality. Um, yeah, so that's what got us to this whole point was they were in a quadruple, quadruple, yeah. And three of them all started hooking up and doing stuff. Two really, but three. And Sarah found out. And she cried and they laughed at her. And she was angry they didn't communicate with her. And so now she's kind of ruining Felipe's entire plan, winning this tournament, and getting to go to school and study. And that is the tournament that I'm drawing the last match to. And that's why I'm drawing this panel. And that's going to lead into the whole rest of the story. It'll lead into the ongoing story. That this will be a big slice of life, cyberpunk, alternate reality, future, contemporary, just story. And that's what this Renegade of Destiny is. There's two parts to Renegade of Destiny. There's a part that takes place in the future that's kind of like the Carl Urban Judge Dredd meets like Warhammer 40k almost. Uh, yeah. So there are two different parts to this story. This is the past story, and this is just the introduction. This is just what gets the ball rolling. Sarah's whole interaction with Felipe, and her breaking up with him, and her finding this stuff out, and everything that happens. And so this is my very official first art video of YouTube, which is the page where Sarah gets kicked in her vagina. She actually says vagina on the next page, so yeah. No, it's a good word. You should hear people say it a lot. It's a good word. So again, you know, where these white reflections would be, what this would all represent, I, I, I don't know if I'm doing this right. At this point, uh, I feel like I just do this kind of arbitrary. But it ends up giving my picture a good highlight when you look at it from afar. Okay, this page and the next and the previous page that I've done, I have to go into every single panel and I need to color Sarah's fucking fingernails. Because of course she has her fucking fingernails painted while she's having a martial arts tournament. <sighs> See that that that's the thing I'm more worried about. Not whether or not anything else that I've just said is realistic or not. So what do her fingernails look like? No. Really? This is just the entrance. This is the segue into the story. It's this martial arts tournament. It's 2061. But here's the thing. Is that... This... Okay. You know how in Thundercats... They had Third Earth. Which was supposed to be Earth. But it was like... in it's third cycle or whatever. Like there had been three iterations of Earth already. My story's kind of like that. But not the same. But this is basically Fourth Earth. Uh, in a previous iteration of Earth's existence, reality weapons were employed, and, you know, just the name, reality weapons, implies that it can affect the way reality works. So every time Earth gets wiped out, it basically blinks back into existence and rebuilds itself almost identically to a certain point. Maybe some things are different, there's some alternate histories, some different names, different monuments, different cities, different whatever, but... Essentially, history replays itself, and, you know, there are, there are different iterations of history that plays out, and there are leftovers of the previous iterations of humanity in the galaxy. Top dog aliens I've got in my species are the Propathians, and the Propathians are the last surviving race from the original first Earth, who at one point dominated the entire galaxy. Blech, my voice just broke. Dominated the entire galaxy. And there's some aliens in the Propathian group, but they were integrated into human society at some point, and so they're part of this whole thing. But the Propathians are from First Earth, and then from Second Earth, they became a techno-zombie race known as the uh, Katoshi. Third Earth, they became a human interstellar empire known as the Ronin. And now here we are, Fourth Earth, and we're in the year 
2061 of fourth earth and at this point you're several billion years in the future humanity has come and gone three different times the propathians are the last remaining original humans and this is taking place in a galaxy called Amanogawa, which is Japanese for River of Heaven. And the reason they call it that is because of how vast the starscape is in the night sky and how many stars there are. And the reason that is, is because at this point, Andromeda and Milky Way have collided. And through reality intervention, because remember we've got reality weapons in this reality, or I'm using the word reality too much. We have reality weapons in this story. They made sure that the Milky Way and Andromeda merger was as perfect as it could be in this iteration of reality. And here in this galaxy, it's huge. I mean, fuck. Okay, right here, Aminogawa. Um, it's huge, it's Milky Way plus Andromeda, it's the future. So that's where we are, we're in the year 2361 of future of fourth Earth. So billions of years from now, so pretty much anything I make up is nothing to do with today and it's all an alternate far flung future that you can't even imagine. And the reasons and things and stuff behind everything, but that's what this basic story is. And that's where this martial arts tournament takes place. So yeah, girls can fight boys and blah 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 blah, and there's lots of stuff going on. I know, it's weird. I know, it is. I'm still working on this panel. So here we go. Um, so I drew my characters, and again, I don't know if they're perfect. Uh, they're, they're not. They'll never be. You know, I just put in the lines here for the background, smudge it up a bit, and when you get close, it looks kind of sloppy and bad. When you look at it from far away, it looks good like that. And that's fully they kicked Sarah in the crotch. Now I need to do some more things. So stick with me. This story is designed to be a ongoing epic, basically. Um, this stretches far beyond this timeline, far beyond this time scale, and takes us way into the future. And there is a huge story in the future for these characters that is a thing. And this is only beginning at the earliest point of the story when I'm telling the story. Yeah. Yeah, so basically Felipe gets himself cancelled, which Sarah isn't even the one who cancels him. It's her identical twin at least who does it, which hold on. See your twin sister right there. See? Sarah's got a twin. See, Sarah does plenty of kicking of him, so don't don't think this is all just one sided. It's not. Boom, kicks her in the crotch. Then I always have to figure out what kind of sound effect of blah blah do I want to put in there. You know, I want to put crunch, but crunch seems like it should be reserved for like a dude. Sarah shouldn't get a crunch when she gets kicked in the crotch. Then, like, what comes to mind is twack. T-A-W-K. But that sounds too much like something else, so I don't want to put twack. That was the sound of me vaping, in case you could hear that. If not, I vape. 
<laughs> See, now, because up here I got back. <laughs> she does these things. You can see my whole page here. You can read this page if you want. That's what she says to piss him off, since it sounds like a personal problem. Then, boom. I'll show you what happens after this. You know, should I have it just be... Boom. There we go. Boom. See, crunch feels right. Probably isn't right. But it feels like it sh feels right. Jesus. Just sound just like just doof. Just doof. you know. Good old crack. Thwack actually looks pretty good. See, this is how big of a dork I am. I sit here thinking about what kind of sound effect looks the best for somebody getting kicked in the crotch. And then. I found myself a reference piece of artwork I have. Okay, I got in my hands Danger Girl 20 years anniversary issue. The good old nut kick in this. Just curious what the sound effect is. Thwap ding. That's the sound effect. Is thwap ding. Uh, if I remember to do it, I'll, I'll, um, you know what? I'll use my phone right now. I'm gonna take a picture, do the magic of Photoshop, or do the magic of YouTube. There we go. Thwap ding. So thwap. Thwack. Like the K on there. I'm just gonna go with thwack. <laughs> so there we go. I'm sure getting kicked in that last panel. Like I said, I'm not the greatest artist. It's a weird story, but I got a story going on here. So here's my process. I'll export this bastard. Um let's see, got a lot of bullshit going on here. I'm sorry. I'll export this bastard and then
Okay. There you go. That is the comic strip that I'm doing. It's 13 pages of actual comic book. And there's a little who's who at the end right here, which I need to put more people in there to be quite honest. But yeah. So I'll show you this real quick because I know I had this up earlier. So now it's like a whole fighty fighty fight thing. You know, she dropped him on his fucking back there. That had to hurt. And he came up and he punched and he kicked and he punched. He did it like spin kick and she fell and he kicked her in the face right here, which is not very cool. But he did. He had yelled at. He lost points. She goes in. She kicks him in the face like five times. Like one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Like eight times. And they do a whole thing. And also, you know, I think that a martial artist, like a real martial artist, is going to look at the story and they're going to laugh. Like this seems very unrealistic and like this is very not done well. Well, I'm just trying to have fun. I'm trying to get my story out of my head. And me making Sarah a martial artist in the story is foreshadowing stuff that happens way down the line. So it's like a whole thing. So I'm doing the best I can. If, if I'm making some martial artist's head out there hurt by the story you're seeing here, I apologize. I'm doing the best I can. Now, obviously, I'm going to draw this better. But he kicks her upside the jaw after that. And he does like a sweep kick. And he knocks her off her feet. And she lands and does a roll. And it's back up. It's yelled at. She comes up there. You know, this is. Hope you fucking enjoyed that, Felipe, because that was the closest you're ever going to get to my vagina. There you go, That's Sarah. <laughs> it's just like a whole thing. She fucking kicks him right back. Wonderful. Anyway, that's me working on my story. You stayed with me for this long. Thank you. Uh, maybe I'll do more like this. This is kind of fun. We'll see what's up.